This is Wild Chronicles. I'm Boyd Matson. <laughs> Biologist Helen Crowley from the Wildlife Conservation Society has led this team of scientists by plane, car, and raft to this remote area of forest in northeast Madagascar called Makira. It has been hard going, unexpected, and unexplored rapids and a three-day stretch of carrying the rafts overland that almost broke up the expedition. When we got past the first waterfall, most of the porters were ready to quit. It's been an intense experience getting deep into the forest. We knew it would be tough getting to start the expedition, but I think it's been a lot tougher. Oh my gosh, so cold. And cold. But finally, along smooth waters, the team slides into the heart of the forest. See the first mountain that's got some forest on it up ahead? A little tantalizing glimpse of what is ahead. Putting the hardship of the trek aside, the team gets down to the real work, documenting the biological riches of Makira and developing a strategy to protect them. Few scientists have ever set foot in this remote wilderness. But those who have come to Madagascar have been richly rewarded. National Geographic naturalist Maria Mayor recently discovered a mouse lemur that may be the smallest lemur in the world. And this year, scientists have identified at least two other new species, bringing the total number of lemur species to an amazing 49. The team is hopeful they will add to this ever-expanding list of unique plants and animals. Nice to see them in the wild like that. Madagascar is really a very special place because it's been isolated from the rest of the world for millions and millions of years. Things have evolved here that don't occur anywhere else. But deep within this seemingly unexplored forest, the team finds something they weren't expecting. An abandoned village. Even here, it turns out, Humans have left their mark. Well, I think uh, probably people came into the forest either to uh, hunt lemurs or set traps and hunt animals. The thing that's I think hit all of us is people have been just about everywhere. In my kira, the Ilya Fisher made the Infanter. Deforestation is increasing rapidly. There's never been a biological inventory of Makira. It's important to look for more species. One of the special things about Makira is there just aren't many places left like this. In just a few days' time, the team finds a number of frogs and plants, and at least one freshwater fish that they believe are new species. To find that many would be a real scientific coup. It will take months of analysis to verify whether or not these animals are new species. But even if they are not, Makira's amazing biodiversity has convinced the team of the forest's critical importance. During this trip, I found many endangered species. That's why Makira is really important for conservation. Their time in the forest runs out all too soon. People have created their lives and we've lost a lot more of the forest. I think we've really felt and seen the fragility of what's left as far as the forest goes and conserving that forest and how critically important it is for all of these people that live around. At a nearby community, the expedition is greeted with celebration. 
and the team feels that the people who live here want their forest to survive. People just feel good about, you know, conservation and the things that we've done and oh, this makes me feel so good. I feel hopeful, very hopeful, very optimistic. And that was another major goal of the expedition, to raise awareness among the local population and the world. I think it's very important to show people about why this is important and why we do what we're doing. And all of us are motivated by the same thing, making the world a better place for everybody. Check for Wild Chronicles on your local PBS station. Sponsored by National Geographic Mission Programs. Taking science and exploration into the new millennium. For the best subscription offers to any National Geographic magazine, log on to nationalgeographic.com slash magazines.